Well, today we learned that the family of Kate Steinle, who was murdered allegedly by an illegal immigrant felon who was deported five times from this country, but was nevertheless allowed to stay in San Francisco, has filed a lawsuit alleging negligence against the city, the sheriff's department, and the sheriff who failed to protect Kate. It is based on San Francisco's sanctuary city policy, which protects illegal immigrants from deportation. As sympathetic as the Steinle family is, as a legal matter, the case is almost certain to fail. No similar lawsuits have ever been successful, and one directly on point was brought and rejected just a few years ago in the case of Danielle Bologna, a widow whose husband and sons were killed thanks in part to this same policy. The law provides absolute immunity for the city in lawsuits challenging its ordinances, even those passed by lawmakers who are clearly overstepping their authority or thumbing their nose at the feds. The exceptions are extremely limited and do not apply here. As sad as that is for the Steinle family, their remedy in this case is political, not legal. Those who back these policies and enforce them can be removed. The law, however, is not on the side of the Steinleys. Mark Iglarsh is a criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. Brian Claypool is a civil rights and criminal defense attorney. Thank you for both for being here. Mark, Thanks, what do you think? Yeah. You just took away my argument. That was it. Um, I think that it's a wonderful lawsuit if the purpose is to raise awareness and potentially change some laws which are needed. This was a tragedy and it shouldn't have happened. However, the Due Process for All Ordinance, which was passed in San Francisco, October of 2013, required the sheriff, required the jail to let him go unless there was a order of removal by a judge or an active warrant. Both were not present here. They had to follow the law and let him go. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, Brian, according to the precedent, you can't, even if it's a stupid ordinance, even if the ordinance is, flies in the face of federal law, it doesn't get you past the immunity. It doesn't allow you to pierce the immunity that the city has for its laws. Megan, that may be true, but the, the problem I have with this case, though, is that there was a phone call from Customs and Immigration to the police department saying, this guy Sanchez is a threat. When he's out, you g give us a phone call. And I have a real problem with how that does not create a duty owed by the police department at that time to simply make a phone call. It takes 10 seconds. You and I can talk all day about the legal ramifications, does the immunity apply here or not, but what about the moral obligation of the police department? And more important than but, that, but Megan, But doesn't that what go about to the point that I was trying to make, which is if you, if you have object to the sanctuary city policy, and so many Americans do, although the people of San Francisco may not, take it up at the ballot box. Yeah, but, here, he, but Megan, I think the, the, by filing a lawsuit, though, you can get to the bottom of what really happened here. Because I really think there's something deeper than just, oh, well, uh, the ordinance uh, is in conflict with the federal law. I think what's happening here is, you, and it's a tough night to be talking about being critical of law enforcement, but I think what happens here is you have, you have kind of an arrogance with local law enforcement and the feds. The locals saying, hey, it's not our job. We want to wipe our hands clean. We can't honor what you're asking us. In fact, the chief of police gave a directive, a directive to law enforcement in San Francisco to not honor a request by the Customs and Immigration. But this is, this is the same thing, this. Mark. That's what happened in the case of Danielle Bologna, too. Also a very sympathetic plaintiff, and her case was thrown out by the lower court and in a unanimous decision by the Court of Appeals. Right. And I agree with Brian. He makes a compelling argument on a moral level, but they've got to follow the law or they will be sued. A request from ISIS is not the ICE. same as what is required. ICE, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Look how I juxtaposed. <laughs> wow. Right. Very different. Right. Ooh. But, but morally, again, wow. yes, they could have and, and would have wanted maybe to hold them, but the law doesn't require them unless they have those specific things required. And the reason is they don't want cities like San Francisco having to pay out large judgments by person after sure. person. This is a sympathetic victim. But who, what about the next one who's just trying to make a buck off of a law that they didn't like that San Francisco passed? That's because the, the people of San Francisco wind up having to pay. They pay the litigation fees and they pay the verdicts. And the cities have made a decision as a, as a blanket matter to protect themselves from that, which protects the people from that. But these are the same people who support this policy. So it'll be interesting to see this Steinle case play out. They also have another lawsuit against the uh, BLM and ICE, which may raise some different issues. Great to see you both. Great to see you, Megan. Thanks.